Hello and welcome to worship from Broadway Baptist in Derby. We're starting the service in the local park in the Hydrangea Garden. It is supposed to be one of the best collections in the country. And as you can see, the flowers are still coming out. It should be at its best in the next two or three weeks. But it doesn't just happen like that. People have lovingly tended it They've cut back old growth. They have added nutrients to the soil so it is rich. They have tended it, watered it, fed it, done everything they can to make it look at its best. And already it is quite magnificent. It's a wonderful example of people working as stewards with God's creation. This is the theme that we're going to be thinking about today as we look at our own lives. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord, I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted and the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. Let all creation sing before the Lord And every nation of the earth rejoice Let all the trees lift a shout of joy For the Lord is King Let the deep waters of the sea resound Let every mountain, every hill sing out Let all the fields make a joyful sound For the Lord is King Every star and car 
Let's pray. Lord, we cannot hold back the praise that wells up within us. Every time we think of you and your goodness to us, we long to offer praise to your holy name. Father, we are overwhelmed by the vastness of space and by the wonder of your world. We are filled with joy by the beauty of your creation and the thrill of discovering its intricate designs. We rejoice in the gift of friendship and we praise you for the faith of all your people. Lord, we praise you for the hope, joy and sense of purpose with which you fill our lives, for the sense of adventure which meets us each day and for the sheer pleasure of living in your exciting world. We praise you for being the kind of God who loves to give good gifts to all your children and for making us so that we can enjoy good things. We praise you for the journey of life and for the journeys we are making each day, for all those who share the path we are taking and for the love encouragement and care we receive along the way. We praise you for Christ, who is the beginning and the end of our journey of faith, and for the Holy Spirit, who enables us to walk close to you. Father, receive our praise and enable us to give you glory, for we ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. John and Sue have returned from their holiday in Northumberland where John saw a creed displayed in St Aidan's Church in Bambra. He's going to lead us in it now. We believe in God the Father who created the world in love, who created men and women in his image to live with each other in ways of love, justice and forgiveness. Who is to be found in human love, in the glory of nature, in the marvels of science, in the beauty of music and poetry? Who is with us in any sadness, loneliness or fear, and in our joys and celebrations? Who is near, not far off, and we can come to him in prayer? We believe in Jesus Christ, who was born and lived a human life in Palestine 2,000 years ago, who showed God's love to the poor, the outsider, the ordinary and the rich, in whose life we see what God is like, forgiving, accepting, healing and challenging, who gave his life in love dying on a cross and reconciling the world to God, who is with us always, who sent out his followers to change the world, taking a message of good news to all people, who asks his followers to keep on doing this today. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the presence of God within each person, guiding us in the way of truth, who helps us to realise our potential and become fully the person God made us to be, who is the invisible go-between connecting us with God and other people and making us aware of their needs, who encourages us in gifts of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control, who is at work in the church and in the world. We belong to the world-wide church. The church is not just a building, but all those people who follow in the way of Jesus we meet together to pray to God and to celebrate the sacraments. We care for one another and help each other to grow in faith. We are ordinary people who are concerned for 
and get involved in the life of the community in which we live. We pray for the needs of the poor everywhere and try to find ways of working for peace and justice for all. We accept our responsibility to use our gifts and talents for the benefit of others and for caring for God's world. I've been tending to the pots in the garden and a few weeks ago with some help I was refreshing the soil in some of them and I came to this pot uh, it's a hydrangea that was given to me a couple of years ago and if the person who gave it to me is watching please don't despair yet as I was looking at it I noticed that although the leaves were budding as they should somehow it didn't seem quite as abundant as they had been in previous years but it was early summer so perhaps it was still waking up however I did think it could do with some fresh compost to help it along a bit so I eased the plant out of the pot 
You'll be glad I don't have a photo of what I saw because the compost was alive with squidgy, squirming white larvae. Yes, the pot was infested with fine weevil, which feed on the roots and if not dealt with, will eventually kill the plant. I couldn't see that from just looking at it. Even though something didn't seem quite right, it wasn't as bad. And had I not been doing this, it could easily have gone unnoticed until it was too late to rescue it. For me, this hydrangea plant, so different from the ones in the special garden in the park that we opened the service with, is a reminder of a well-known parable that Jesus told. We're going to watch an animated version from Luke 8, 5, 15. But Luke is also quite particular about who is present. Listen to these opening verses. Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. Well, I'll be honest, I approach today's reading with a little trepidation, having heard one New Testament scholar describe preaching on the parables as a bit like explaining a joke. It can so easily kill it. And certainly there is a lot in it that is self-explanatory, especially given that it is one that Jesus explains. But I believe this parable also has some pointers for us as a church as well as us individually at this time. It may be known as the parable of the sower but the sower disappears quite quickly from the story and instead we are left with an account of what happened to the seeds in the different soils that they landed in. And this is why it is interesting to know who is present. Jesus is surrounded by his disciples who he had chosen and called by name to leave their lives behind and follow him. Then there were the women whose lives had been transformed by Jesus in powerful ways and were now supporting him. And finally, there were the crowds that gathered around him, fascinated by his teaching and his ability to heal. But I wonder what their response to him was. I wonder which group you would include yourself in. 
Jesus isn't impressed or distracted by numbers. He could see beyond the initial enthusiasm to the heart and this parable sifts them out. The same word goes out, but people respond differently and notice how Jesus expects it. There will be people who are hard-hearted and the message of God's love and the kingdom doesn't penetrate. There are those who seemingly receive it with great enthusiasm, but when life gets difficult, they drift away. These are the ones who sadly seeing don't see and hearing don't understand, as the Isaiah quote says. But this parable is also important to remind us of our place. Our responsibility is to be faithful in speaking and sharing and living authentically. But it isn't our responsibility how people receive it. We can do our best to pray, to care, to share, but only God changes the heart. We should not be surprised if, in taking a step of courage to share something of our story and experience, people don't respond, or they may do initially but then fall away because the word hasn't taken root, or because they are distracted by life's worries, riches or pleasures. But it is important that our lives reflect something of the life of Jesus. I am saddened by the number of conversations I've had recently with people who could fall into the first two categories, who will say something like, well, I just don't see how it is relevant for my life today. And I just struggle with organised religion. Well, I freely admit, yes, I struggle with that too. But about Jesus being relevant for people today, we all need to encounter him personally to be able to share that experience with others. It doesn't have to be dramatic, just authentic. But sometimes, sometimes God breaks through in amazing ways. New Life Church have been out in the streets of Normanton this week, sharing the good news about Jesus, offering prayer. In conversation with one person on Wednesday, the person speaking had a strong sense that this person was planning to commit suicide. He even sensed the day they were about to do it. When he shared this with the person, they broke down in tears and asked, how did he know? He was able to tell them that God loves them so much that not only does he know what's going on in their hearts, but he has shared that knowledge. This is an example of seed falling on good soil and bearing fruit. But that level of discernment comes by persistence in prayer and practice. But before we get to the good soil, Jesus makes an interesting point with seed that falls among thorns. In verse 7 it appears that the seed and the thorns grow up together. When Jesus explains it, this stands for those who hear and it seems have good intentions, but as they go about life, they are choked by it, its worries, its riches, its pleasures. And Jesus says, they do not mature. Of all the soil that the seed falls into, this, I believe, is the most dangerous one for us. People with good intentions, the seed does take root, but we can be so distracted, busy, preoccupied by many things, good things, but they choke the life from that vital relationship with God, the growing that comes from spending time with Jesus. The good thing is that thorns can be seen. They're not so easy to weed out though. And as I look at my own life, I see the thorns that so easily entangle, busyness leading to tiredness, preoccupations, worries, and a disruption of my spiritual rhythms that help me to stay connected, particularly in these last few months. Sometimes though, the problem is more insidious, like the weevil larvae in my hydrangea pot, and it needs deeper work. But all of them are enemies to fruitfulness and deep spirituality. At such times, I know the seed needs nutrients to enable fruitfulness to return. Things like spiritual disciplines, not a popular word, but it's really just a framework of prayer, reading, meditating on God's word, allowing it to penetrate deeply, 
just like a good compost and touch every aspect of my life. Space to be in solitude, to rest so I can be more aware of what's going on inside. To do things I enjoy that are fun and interesting for me. All of these are restorative and we all need such intentional ways that affect our deepest parts, not just the outer of what we do. Let me change the picture from a plant. On sabbatical two years ago, I came across the work of Pete Scazzero, a pastor who planted and ministered at the same church in New York City for over 30 years. He uses the image of an iceberg and says the activity that we see of one another is simply the tip. We can become Christians. We make time for church, worship, prayer, Bible study, fellowship, a rota or six. We work hard at the way we conduct ourselves and the way we treat others. But underneath the surface, our interior world can be disordered. Relational life can be fractured. Christian life is something that we've added on and it may look fine, just like my hydrangea, but the roots of who we are can remain unchanged and unmoved. And when that happens, there is little or no spiritual fruit, just as my hydrangea is struggling to flower this year, just one instead of the abundance there should be. Might this be the lack of maturity that Jesus is referring to? Scazzieri suggests some signs that we are suffering from emotionally unhealthy spirituality like when we use God to actually run away from him, being so busy doing for God that we have no time to be with him. That doing far outweighs being. Busyness can also mean that we are unaware of our drivers and motivations, unhealthy patterns of behaviour we may have picked up from our upbringing and life experience and perhaps we've passed them on to our children. We hold on to power and control of our lives instead of submitting it to God. And this is something that we may have had to face in these last few months as control has been taken from us in so many ways. How has it affected us? But then there is the call to a different rhythm of life. Accepting our limits, learning to say no, practicing Sabbath, not simply a day to catch up on chores, but a day intentionally present to God. A day to rest and be rejuvenated and restored, to be in God's presence, however that feeds us. We might be walking in beautiful countryside, gardening with friends and family, cooking a meal, doing a hobby, whatever brings us life. So these are some of the things that lead to what Scazzero calls emotionally healthy spirituality. One woman contrasted it this way. I was a Christian for 22 years, but instead of being a 22-year-old Christian, I was a one-year-old Christian 22 times. She recognised she had not developed depth or dealt with besetting behaviours that had plagued her all her life. Growing in awareness of skills to love well and to love Christ above all else is key to a transformed life that others can see and hopefully be curious about. Interestingly, Jesus follows on from the parable of the sower in Luke 8 with the parable of the lamp on a hill and letting it shine. And I'm still learning. The study weekends I have been on in the last month or so have been about me growing an awareness in some of these areas and starting to learn to help others too. But in as much as there is a call to us to attend to the soil of our lives, to ensure we root deeply, so we also need to look at our life as a body together and what it means to have emotionally healthy spirituality as a church. One of the things that a number of people at Broadway have realised in these months of lockdown is just how busy they had become with church. Sunday worship had become a matter of which rota or rotas am I on today? It was going from one activity to another and people weren't just tired, 
they were spiritually burnt out. In this last year, it is like the ground has been fallow, but notice what has sprung up and developed. Regular prayer. Yes, it's small, but it's consistent. Crafting for wellness, mindfulness sessions, renew well-being 166, toddlers on a much more focused level, the garden as a place of hope, being and reflection. There is a natural recognition to attend to the inner life. It is giving more space for encounters with God, for God to be at work. These are the first two of our values. There's been a tremendous move to care for one another and the things that have gone on have been about doing together. These are the third and fourth of our values. We have demonstrated compassion through care in the community, support for the food banks and eco issues. But how do we witness to the inner life within us? How do we protect the new shoots of growth without choking them by returning to a level of busyness that doesn't make time to slow down for God? There were ministry activities that were significant before lockdown that may not be right to continue in the same way. A period of reflection is needed and whether we have people who have capacity, competence and calling to do it. If we are going to be fruitful in what we do, it is imperative that the soil out of which it happens is fertile. We're going to think more about this by following some accounts of a series of people in Acts uh, over the next few weeks. So if you're going to be away and not able to catch up on YouTube, I can give you the passages to mull over yourself. But as we allow this particular parable to sink in, how does it speak to us today? Our next song is one that uh, a member found particularly helpful in lockdown. He'd come across services from Cockfosters and learnt Christ our hope in life and death from there. He says it speaks to him of the rock solid faith that he can have in God now and in the future.
Christ he lives, Christ he lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him, then we will rise to meet the Lord, then sin and death will be destroyed, and we will be Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you have called us by name. Though we are so different, we are united by your Holy Spirit. Help us then to slow down so that we might encounter you often in our lives, not just when we are gathered in worship, but in the everyday, the work that we do, the quiet times, the noisy times, even in the most ordinary of times. Help us to know you never leave us. And in those moments when we are worried and stressed, help us to be still before you, our heart rate slowed, our breathing deepened, the ability to let go of all that preoccupies us. Help us to be expectant that you are at work. Open our eyes to see your work, unblock our ears to hear your voice. We pray for the mission of new life in Normanton. Give them courage as they speak and sensitivity to your leading. May many find new life and freedom in you. As restrictions lift and we are able to meet more people, help us to be hospitable, sharing your heart of generosity and encouragement. We remember that Jesus was found at the tables and homes of those least liked by the status seekers and religious leaders. Give us humility of heart to see you in everyone we meet. Thank you for our AGM meeting this week when we were able to gather for the first time in months. Thank you for the ways in which your work has continued, even if many of us have been at home. Show us how we might serve together, giving of ourselves and sharing our resources, but out of that relationship with you. We pray for those who are in hospital or recovering from injury. Restore them to full health, we pray. For those concerned about forthcoming operations, give them peace of mind and may your healing hand be upon them. Give us compassion and hearts of courage to work for justice and the kingdom. May we be voices for the voiceless, recognising that those far from us are brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray particularly for Aradna and the Social Services Institute in Nagpur, India, as they serve the community, providing help for those with COVID, and now suffering from the floods caused by heavy rain. Lord, we pray, have mercy on them. As we see the changing weather patterns across our world, so we recognise how much our choices impact others. Help us to be wise and careful with all the resources you have given us. Finally, help us to be a witness to Christ. May we live with a living hope in our hearts that overflows into everything we do. May we be ready to share the reason for this hope 
whenever we are asked. Give us the words to say. Help us to hear your prompt and the move of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our final song is a hymn that reminds us that as God has helped in the past, so he continues in that today. And so as we close, God of compassion, who spoke through creation, through the prophets, through your son, Jesus Christ, grant us wisdom to listen to your voice. In the midst of our diversity, may we be united in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless. If you would like to get in touch with us, then do contact us by our website, broadwaybaptist.co.uk or by our Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. Be thou
Christ be with you. Christ within you. Christ be The Lord met the light of his face, and the goodness of his heart to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Niech się Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Facă să lumineze fața Lui peste tine. Cosi fuini alafia.